Hey everyone and welcome to lesson number 12 and I know I told you guys that we'd be making the site live in this lesson but I lied to you. I noticed that we haven't created the functionality yet for the show hide article button which I think is pretty important. Uh, I like how the article is hidden, it'll highlight the video since this is technically a video log and not a blog. Um, we want to highlight the video and be able to hide these but if someone wanted to include information with it they could and they could show that and obviously I feel like this is a pretty good affordance you can tell exactly what it's gonna do especially since it shows you within the text so in this one we're gonna be creating the jQuery for that and I'm actually gonna type it out this time I'm not gonna paste it in uh, hopefully that'll help you understand a little bit more of the process that goes into it the thought process to set this whole thing up uh, also we're gonna be covering search engine optimization and we're gonna be talking about um, uh, patent trademarks and how it's important to check before you invest a lot of time and money into setting up your own website that you check to make sure the trademark isn't already taken because if they decide they need a website and they need your name um, they will win and they can have the they can have basically what you've registered already they will be able to get the rights to that so it's important to do a little bit of research before you go um, head first into starting up your own website especially if you're planning on uh, doing more things with it than just a personal site so let's go ahead and get started um, within the files within the sslug folder that we've been working in you want to go to the first JS folder not the one within the login but the one within the root directory and you want to open the script.js file um, and then within the root directory you also want to open index.php so now that we have that open, uh, basically what we're doing here is we are calling the Google, um, the Google saves these files on their servers and they have the latest version of jQuery, so you want to call that. They also have uh, the latest version of the jQuery UI being pulled in and I have the script.js file within the JS folder being pulled in. And that's what this, oh, oops, I'm so sorry. And that is this file right here. And first thing we need to do is call jQuery with the dollar sign. And then we need to write a function that tells everything to hold on until everything is loaded. Okay, and that's what that is. So I'll go ahead and mark that. Document.ready function. Um, now, within the index.php, we need to find um, the section that contains the article and here it is right here it's called uh, it's a div with the class of blog content and the article is located within that so let's go back here and we'll call that jQuery find blog content and the dot that represents class if it was an ID we would use a pound sign blog content and we want to hide it um, if you didn't want it hidden originally, if you wanted it to show, you could skip this whole line here. But I want it hidden to start out. So, hides article. And we'll make sure that's working. And now it's hidden. But obviously this button doesn't do anything yet. We haven't told it to. So now we need to find that. And it is right above it. And I did these on purpose. They're right in a line so that I could use the dot next function within jQuery to call the next element in line. So it's right above it, it's called, it's a div with a class of more, show hide article. So jQuery call the div with the class of more, and on the click, so dot click, we wanna run a function, and that function is going to be find this, and this is gonna be the element that we're currently talking about which is more so find this which is more and go next which is going to be the blog content because it's next in line so find this go next element in line and then animate it and all I'm doing here is I'm closing out my tags and it's a requirement to have all your tags closed and this is the way you do it in JavaScript basically so the things that we're going to actually animate are, uh, we're gonna animate the height, and we're gonna tell it to toggle. And what toggle does is it basically 
reverses the animation that happened previously for e with each click. So we're going to change the height with the first click, and then when we click it again, it's going to reverse that animation and show it. That's what Toggle does. And then we're going to add some parameters like slow, um, that's the speed of the animation, and we're going to do add swing, which will add like a, a little bit of acceleration. You could do linear if you didn't want swing. A linear would be more robotic, straight line of speed. Uh, swing will make it like speed up and then slow down a little bit. So it looks a little bit more natural. And then the last thing we're going to do, which I don't think I did in the other jQuery, but it's important to do it, return false. And what return false does is it prevents the browser default. Let's see if this works. And by browser default, I mean when you click these buttons, typically you'll get like a, a pound sign because that's what I have represented for the link. And we want to prevent the, that from happening. We don't want the browser to know that that's a link used for that. We want it to just run the animation. So it's not going to do what it does by default. It's going to do what we told it to do. So reload the page. And now it works. And the real beauty of the way this works is we call this and dot next. So it's only finding the next element on the page once. So if we told it to find this and then we told it to find blog content, um, when we click this, every one of these would open and close. Everything that had blog content, and as you know, many of these did. And if we had like 20 posts, all 20 would be opening at one time. We don't want that. And so we did this dot next because it finds exclusively the next element, even if there's more than one class of blog content on the page. So that's what makes these work independently, and that's what's special about this function compared to maybe the other functions. So that's it. The site is done. We can actually you know, save a little bit of file size and bring these together and save that. And now let's talk about search engine optimization real fast. I went over last time I shot this video, so I'm going to try and go fast. Um, we have a little bit of search engine optimization going on. We have uh, a meta section right here, description and content. And we have a site title. Um, those are both things that are considered um, good practices. We don't include tags with our posts. So if you wanted to include tags, you could add a new uh, field to the blogs table called tags, and then you would insert um, you can make a new input for your uh, add post form and call it tags. And then you would, if you did one on wildlife, you could do lions, tigers, bears, and start with the most important and work your way down. And these are ways that search engines uh, use keywords for people searching this information to find it. Um, you can also submit your information to sites like Google and Yahoo. They have bots that do go out and crawl your site automatically, but sometimes it can take them a while to find your site, and sometimes submitting it can add a little bit more relevance to it. Sometimes they say it's a good idea to submit uh, site maps, and you can do that at a site, or uh, here we go. This is, I typed in Google Webmaster, and they have a whole webmaster tool set up. You can log in and they'll tell you if there's malware on your site, if there's any bad scripts on your site. They'll tell you the most important keywords on your site. Uh, keywords that you should be using instead perhaps. Uh, they'll tell you <clears throat> if there's any errors, any URLs that aren't working. Uh, really useful if you're really wanting to get your site to pull up at the top of the list. They really show you good examples on how you can do that. Not to mention uh, abundant resources on important things to be aware of. Also, um, within this page, you can click this link right here at the top, and it's the Search Engine Optimization Starter Guide. And if you're really serious about web development, I highly recommend reading it. It's got tons of good information to get you going. So I'm going to include that link in your Important Lessons link as well. And uh, basically, I'll leave you with Search Engine, engine Optimization there. Oh, actually, I'll show you one thing. To make your site uh, social friendly, um, a site like this, say, you post it on, someone wants to post it on Facebook, and they click the link button to add it to their wall, and it's not going to pull in any images like a lot of sites do, and they're probably wondering why not. Well, you can add this special code. Link route equals image source, and then href, and then you do like example.com slash mylogo.ping. And you'd actually want HTTP. Just like that. Um, basically what this does <clears throat> is it tells it this is the image meta image source that it 
you want Facebook to pull in when someone posts your site. So it's going to pull in your logo every time. Uh, this keeps users from posting pictures that are irrelevant to your site, like some graphics or something that somehow might have gotten pulled in. It also keeps uh, um, it keeps your brand going. I think it's important to have a brand when you're advertising a website. Always pulling in your logo is a good choice. So uh, obviously, if the user wants to change it, he still can. If he wants to change the description, because it will pull in the description and title since we have that stuff set. But uh, it's a good way of helping maintain how your site is represented on social websites, which are one of the number one ways of sharing websites nowadays. So I'm gonna actually delete this from here because we don't have it set up to dynamically load that image for the user, but I just wanted to show you how that works if you wanted to add that yourself. So um, last couple things I wanna talk about is, uh, this is the, I typed in Google jQuery and it actually pulls up, the very first link is the Google Libraries API. And they offer all kinds of uh, different uh, libraries here that you can connect to that they host for free. Google is almost never down. I've never known of them to be down. And they provide all of these and people will load them into the browsers and then when you're using the same library, it doesn't have to be reloaded. But you'll wanna click on the library that you want. We're using jQuery and the jQuery UI, but jQuery is the main one. And under the path, you just copy this link and then and you'll notice there's a min version and there's a non-min version. The min, min version stands for minified and it's gonna be a much smaller file size. This non-minified version is gonna be a much more readable version, but um, as you can see, this is the minified version and you can't read it at all. It's insane jumble, but. So go back to the source code and then at the bottom, when you copied that, you wanna paste it in here and then you wanna add script source equals that Google link and then close out your script. And that's all there is to it, not even included the jQuery library. And um, you've done it from Google. Um, it always, they always keep the up-to-date version. They're never down, and millions of people uh, include this link on their website as well. So if they've been to a website before they came to yours, it's not gonna have to reload it. So there's lots of benefits to using that. So I wanted to show you that. And last thing I wanna show you is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. It's important to make sure your website is not trademarked. Uh, if they decided that a trademark, someone had the trademark and decided they needed a website, they could swoop in and take that domain name from you. So uh, you'll go to the USPTO.gov, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Uh, down here in the middle where it says trademarks, come to search marks. You wanna search the TESS, which is the Trademark Electronic Search System. Uh, right here, you want to do free form, and as you can tell, I have my latest query in there. I search for learn nerd, and I've already done this for my website. This is, uh, if you recall, I am posting all these videos on learn nerd as well, and I would like you to post all of your comments on that website. If you have any questions at all, I can get back to you from there, and uh, I've gone through this whole list. There's several pages of learn. Uh, and nerd, you can see that's like natural nerd and learn to speak and uh, to learn to love, but none of them are learn nerd. So I think I'm I'm okay here. Uh, if you do find yours posted here, you want to make sure that it's not live. So if it's dead, you can probably safely use that. You can see when it died if they're going to be re-registering it. But uh, if it's live, you might want to rethink what you'll be naming your website. So. Uh, kind of want to show you that real quickly, and I'm going to wrap that up there, and next, next time we'll be making our site live.